In this lecture, we will look in detail the beta oxidation pathway of saturated fatty acids. The beta oxidation pathway is essential for the conversion of fatty acyl-CoA into acetyl-CoA. Shown here on the left is the beta oxidation pathway of palmitoyl-CoA. As we have seen, palmitoyl-CoA is a 16 carbon saturated fatty acyl-CoA and it undergoes beta oxidation through four different steps and there are four different enzymes involved in this process. In each pass through this four step sequence, one acetyl residue that is shaded in orange is removed in the form of acetyl-CoA. So shown here is one pass. So there are seven passes in conversion in the conversion of palmitoyl-CoA into eight different acetyl-CoA molecules, right? So uh, how is um, this process done? And what are the role of these enzymes? And what is the chemical mechanism involved in this process? And that's what we are going to look at. Before we get into more details um, as to how beta oxidation uh, is performed, uh, let us look at some of the key cofactors that are involved in these processes. Uh, the first one is the FAD cofactor. FAD stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide. Flavin adenine dinucleotide sometimes also come as flavin mononucleotide. If you look at the structure on the left, there are two different ones. The top one above the pink um, dotted line is FMN or flavin mononucleotide and the whole structure is flavin uh, adenine dinucleotide. What we will be uh, looking at in the beta oxidation pathway is the chemistry of flavin adenine dinucleotide cofactor. Um, the business end of this molecule is shown um, uh, in the green box above and where the arrow, the red arrow points to the nitrogen, that's where chemistry happens. FAD uh, can be converted to uh, a semiquinone, as shown here, as the FADH dot, or a radical uh, transformed semiquinone, or uh, an electron pair transformed, fully reduced FADH2. So in the beta oxidation pathway, FAD is usually converted to FADH2 where an electron pair is transferred to FAD. The second cofactor is called as NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. As you could see from the structure, uh, the structure involves an adenine and it is attached to uh, uh, a nicotinamide moiety. And shown here is the pink colored nicotinamide moiety, that's the business end of this molecule. Um, as you could see, the, the blue arrow is pointing towards a carbon. That's the carbon where chemistry happens. When two electron transfer uh, occurs, uh, NAD gets reduced to NADH. And this is the redox reaction that happens. The third cofactor uh, is called as coenzyme A. Coenzyme A is a long molecule and it has three different parts. Uh, the first one is the 3-phosphoadenosine diphosphate moiety. Um, the second one is pantothenic acid. And the third moiety is the beta mercaptoethylamine. And that's the business end of the molecule. And that has a reactive thiol group. And that thiol group can act as a nucleophile and that is what carries the acetyl group. And if an acetyl group is attached to this thiol, it is called as acetyl-CoA. And wherever you see acetyl-CoA or coenzyme A, this is the structure. The first step in the beta oxidation pathway involves dehydrogenation of an alkane to alkene. And this is catalyzed by the enzyme called as acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. Uh, there are three different isoforms of acyl-CoA dehydrogenase and uh, the first isoform which is a very long chain uh, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase uh, is found in the 
inner mitochondrial membrane. And uh, it acts on fatty acyl-CoA that are 12 to 18 carbon um, chains long. The second one is the medium chain uh, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. And it is found in the matrix, the mitochondrial matrix. And it acts on uh, fatty acyl-CoA that are 4 to 14 carbons long. The third one is a short chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase uh, that is also found in the matrix. Uh, and it acts on 4 to 8 carbon uh, long fatty acyl-CoA molecules. Uh, the result is uh, the formation of a trans double bond. And this is different from the naturally occurring unsaturated fatty acids. The naturally, the naturally occurring unsaturated fatty acids are all cis uh, unsaturation. And this reaction is analogous to the succinate dehydrogenase reaction uh, that is seen in the citric acid cycle. And in this case, electrons from bound FAD is transferred directly to the electron transport chain via electron trans, uh, transferring flavor protein. And there's a protein involved that carries the electrons uh, that FADH2 carries. So uh, uh, because FAD is being uh, mentioned here, FAD is a cofactor that is being used by acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. So let's look at the mechanism of the reaction catalyzed by acyl-CoA dehydrogenase. Now this slide has two parts. On the left side is a reaction that is catalyzed by this enzyme that converts palmitoyl-CoA to trans-delta-2-enoyl-CoA. And on the right is the chemical mechanism that is being catalyzed. Now in all the mechanisms um, that I'm going to show you, you may see that uh, some of these uh, terms like B or cofactor chemistry uh, uh, and arrow pushings and stuff like that, they're pretty common. Wherever you see a B, uh, that means it's a base in the active site of the enzyme, right? Now, the function of this B, the function of this B that is uh, shown in blue, uh, uh, the base is to abstract a proton from the substrate and B has uh, an electron pair uh, with it and in this case uh, there is a base in the active site of acyl coa dehydrogenase that abstracts the proton from the alpha carbon that is because this is the acidic carbon and it has an acidic proton I mean so that proton is abstracted and uh, the carbonyl uh, becomes polarized and that's structure one. In intermediate two, what happens is that the electrons are pushed back and the double bond pushes and pushes out a hydride molecule. Remember, it's not a proton, it's a hydride. That hydride is being transferred to an FAD molecule. And uh, where it is being transferred is to this nitrogen. That's the business end of FAD. And once that happens, there's arrow pushing that can be done and move the bond across. And this nitrogen could then take up a proton from the base that originally abstracted the proton from structure one. This results in the formation of FADH2. It also results in the formation of trans delta 2 enoyl CoA. And so this is the mechanism of the reaction catalyzed by this dehydrogenase enzyme. The second step in this process involves the hydration of an alkene. And this is catalyzed by two isoforms of enoyl-CoA hydratase. So this enzyme is a hydratase, which means that it adds a water molecule across the double bond. Like I said, there are two isoforms. Uh, the first one is a soluble short chain hydratase called as a crotonase. And the second one is a membrane-bound long-chain hydratase that is part of a trifunctional complex. And I'll talk to you about this, this trifunction complex a little later. Um, so this enzyme adds water across the hydrogen bond, yielding an alcohol on 
the beta carbon. And this reaction is analogous to the fumarase reaction in the citric acid cycle. And both these reactions have same stereospecificity. Let's look at the mechanism of the reaction catalyzed by this enzyme, enoyl-CoA hydratase. Um, now, this slide is again split into two parts. On the left side is a reaction uh, catalyzed by this enzyme. Uh, it's converting trans delta 2 enoyl CoA into L beta hydroxy acyl CoA. Um, and the substrate, as you could see, is an alpha beta unsaturated molecule. And uh, the product is a hydroxy molecule. Uh, and the, on the right is a chemical mechanism. And as you could see, again, there is a base uh, in the active site of this enzyme. And when I say a base, um, it is usually an amino acid residue, right? Now, you could think of a histidine residue. A histidine has two nitrogens, and it's aromatic, and this nitrogen has a lone pair, and it could act as a base. Other examples are aspartate or glutamate. Uh, they have uh, a carboxylate side chain, and it's negatively charged, and the carboxylate could abstract a proton, right? So, um, a base, in the active site of enoyl CoA hydratase can abstract a proton uh, from a water molecule and making water molecule nucleophilic. And the hydroxy ion can then attack the beta carbon where the uh, double bond is. And this results in uh, the movement of electrons into the carbonyl. Um, and the carbonyl is uh, an electron sink and it can get polarized, right? And um, structure one, we we'll go to structure two. In structure two, uh, electrons can then push in and abstract a proton back from the base and get converted to L beta hydroxy acyl CoA. The third step in the beta oxidation pathway involves dehydrogenation of an alcohol. This is catalyzed by the enzyme beta hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase. The enzyme uses NAD as a cofactor, uh, and NAD is the hydride acceptor here. Only L isomers of hydroxy acyl CoA acts as substrates, and this reaction is analogous to the malic dehydrogenase reaction in the citric acid cycle. Here is the chemical mechanism of the reaction catalyzed by beta hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase. Um, the reaction that is happening or the reaction that the enzyme catalyzes is on the left. Uh, it converts L-beta hydroxy acyl CoA to beta keto acyl CoA. Uh, now the reaction uh, is a conversion of an alcohol to a ketone. Again, this is an oxidation reaction and this involves the reduction of NAD. NAD is getting converted to NADH. The chemical mechanism is shown on the right uh, where a base in the active site of uh, the enzyme beta hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase abstracts a proton. That proton is the proton of the alcohol, right? Uh, and once this happens, uh, you can push the electrons in and it pushes the uh, uh, electrons out as a hydride. And the hydride is then transferred to uh, the carbon that is shown here uh, on NAD. And as a result, you could push the electrons in to the nitrogen and the nitrogen that is positively charged in NAD is an electron sink. And as a result, you will obtain NADH. So um, the cofactor chemistry is a reduction of NAD plus to NADH. As a result, uh, the substrate is getting oxidized from alcohol, that is compound one, the structure shown here, one to two, which is beta keto acyl CoA. Step four of this pathway involves transfer of fatty acid chain and release of acetyl-CoA. And this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme acetyl-CoA acetyltransferase. It is also called as thiolase. This enzyme involves a covalent mechanism and it uses uh, an active site cysteine for this process. The carbonyl carbon beta keto acyl coa is electrophilic. Uh, because it has two carbonyl carbons. The active site thiolate acts as a nucleophile and releases acetyl-CoA. The terminal sulfur in the CoA uh, and the coenzyme A 
acts as a nucleophile and picks up the fatty acid chain from the enzyme. The net reaction is thiolysis of the carbon-carbon bond. So this is the reaction catalyzed by the enzyme acyl-CoA acetyltransferase or thiolase. Shown on the left is the reaction that is the conversion of beta-keto-acyl-CoA to myristoyl-CoA. As you could see, one molecule of beta-keto-acyl-CoA um, is getting converted to two different molecules. One of them is acetyl-CoA and the other one is myristoyl-CoA. <clears throat> so what is the mechanism of this reaction? So uh, a base in the active side of this enzyme deprotonates a cysteine residue. This is the cysteine residue that is involved in the covalent mechanism. Once the cysteine gets deprotonated, it becomes a thiolate anion that is highly nucleophilic and it attacks uh, this carbonyl carbon uh, that is the beta carbon of beta keto acyl CoA. As a result, <clears throat> you get an enz enzyme substrate intermediate and um, this breaks down um, to release acetyl CoA, uh, that is intermediate 4, and the intermediate 3, which is the enzyme substrate complex, are the thioacyl enzyme intermediate. Um, now, the next step is the cofactor chemistry. As you can see in the rectangular box bow, um, coenzyme A gets deprotonated. Uh, by a base and uh, the deprotonated thiolate anion attacks the carbonyl carbon of the enzyme substrate intermediate and that releases the enzyme resulting in the formation of myristoyl CoA. Fatty acyl CoA molecules that enter mitochondria can have varying lengths of carbon chains. For fatty acyl chains of 12 or more carbons, the reactions in the beta oxidation are catalyzed by a multi-enzyme complex that is associated with the inner mitochondrial membrane. Um, this multi-enzyme complex is called as a trifunctional protein. Um, a trifunctional protein is a het heterooctamer and it has four alpha subunits and four beta subunits. The four alpha subunits have got two different enzymatic activities. Uh, one of them is the enoyl-CoA hydratase activity, that is the addition of water across the double bond. And the second one is the beta-hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase activity that has the uh, NAD cofactor and it oxidizes the alcohol to ketone. And um, the alpha subunits are responsible for binding to the inner mitochondrial membrane. The four subunits, on the other hand, have the long chain thiolase activity. The only enzymatic activity that this trifunction protein lacks is the acyl CoA dehydrogenase activity, that's the first step of beta oxidation that involves the FAD cofactor. Now, this may allow substrate channeling between enzymes because it's an enzyme bound, sorry, it's a membrane bound trifunctional protein um, and it is associated with the inner mitochondrial membrane. As I said, um, it can process fatty acid chains with 12 or more carbons. So uh, that is a requirement for the trifunctional protein uh, to act on its substrate. The substrate should have more than 12 carbons on the fatty acyl CoA chain. Shorter chains processed by soluble enzyme in the matrix. What this means is that once the trifunctional protein finishes processing 12 or more carbon containing uh, fatty acyl CoA, you're left with less than 12 carbon chain fatty acyl CoA. Um, in that situation, um, soluble enzymes, and soluble enzyme, and I say soluble enzyme, individual enzymes like individual enoyl CoA hydratase, individual beta-hydroxyacyl-CoA dehydrogenase, these soluble enzymes uh, that float around in the matrix process these short-chain fatty acyl-CoA molecules. It is important to remember that fatty acid catabolism happens only when there is an energy need. In the specific case of beta-oxidation that we looked at, 
with palmitic acid, which is a saturated fatty acid with 16 carbon atoms. The net result is the formation of eight molecules of acetyl-CoA. And this is from seven different cycles. In addition, you get seven FADH2 and seven NADH. The fate of acetyl-CoA uh, is that it enters citric acid cycle and further get oxidized to CO2. Citric acid cycle also makes GTP, NADH, and FADH2. The electrons from all FADH2 and NADH enters the electron transport chain in the mitochondria. So the net result is that beta oxidation of palmitoyl CoA results in the formation of 108 ATP molecules. How does this happen? Remember, NADH and FADH2 serve as sources of ATP. This means that the mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation produces 1.5 ATP per FADH2 oxidized and 2.5 ATP per NADH oxidized. As we have seen, beta oxidation produces 7 FADH2 and 7 NADH. From the citric acid cycle, we get 8 plus 8, that is 16 NADH. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 8 plus 8 plus 8, that's 24 NADH and 8 FADH2. So if you account for the fact uh, that GTP produces FADH2, NADH, and also 8 GTP, and count the number of ATP molecules, you will end up with 108. The obvious question here is why beta oxidation? Why does cell have to go through all this trouble in oxidizing fatty acid? Is there not a different way to oxidize or a different way to convert fatty acids into ATP? The answer is this. To shorten the carbon chain to form acetyl-CoA. That seems to be an obvious answer. But the real scenario is this. Now, to shorten a fatty acyl-CoA chain to acetyl-CoA, you need to break carbon-carbon bonds. The first carbon-carbon bond that is broken is shown by this red arrow here, right? The carbon-carbon bond between C alpha and C beta. Beta oxidation is necessary to destabilize and break the single bond between the C alpha and C beta carbons in fatty acids. That is because the CC bonds in fatty acids are relatively stable. CC bond, breaking CC bond itself uh, is extremely tough, especially CC single bonds, right? The first three reaction of beta oxidation create a much less stable CC bond. So if you were to look at the figure here, uh, the structure, the two structures here, the first one shown is uh, palmitoyl CoA with 16 carbon atoms, right? After three rounds of beta oxidation, it gets converted to this structure with two carbonyl uh, uh, carbons. Now, well, what this does is it weakens the CC bond between C alpha and C beta. So this less um, stable CC bond is further broken down by the thiolase enzyme and converts it to acetyl-CoA and another short chain fatty acid. This is the reason why beta oxidation is important. The reaction sequence in the beta oxidation pathway is certainly not unique to this pathway. This means that these reactions also happen in other metabolic pathways like the citric acid cycle or the oxidation of specific amino acids like isoleucine, leucine, or valine. Uh, this means that citric acid cycle and this oxidation pathway also involve these reactions, although the enzymes involved in this pathway are different. That is because the substrate or the starting molecule is different. What is unique uh, or what is common 
in these three pathways are the reactions. The first reactions that involves a dehydrogenation with FAD uh, followed by the hydration and dehydrogenation again with NADH. And so the beta oxidation uh, pathway is extremely important. And if you understand the reactions and the reaction mechanisms involved in this process, uh, it would be much easier for you to comprehend as we go further.